Hi everyone, it's Helen here. So, it's been a glorious weekend, and if you've been anything like me, you will have been doing a lot of work in the garden. I've been working a lot on my veg, and my back's been just a little bit backish. So I thought I would pop on and do a quick video and show you the sort of things that I do to ease my back when I've been overdoing it in the garden. I am going to use my little uh, squashy Pilates ball. If you don't have one, don't worry. Just get a good squashy cushion, okay? Because that's where we're going to start. So lay yourself down. You're going to lift the pelvis and you're going to put the ball or the cushion just at the back of the pelvis. So that space above the pubic bone, below the navel. Let the arms just rest. You can knock your knees together. It'll relax your hips. And then just gently just mooch around on the ball. So get a little bit of side to side, like a little rocking boat. Get a little bit of forward and back. So as you imprint your low back towards the space and the floor and then release. Don't overdo it. You don't want to really heavily arch. Just ease that around a few little circles so you're massaging into the back of the pelvis so generally just moving around in whatever movement feels really good for you so i can feel i get a very tight lower lumbar spine my ql muscle my quadratus lumborum muscle gets incredibly tight it impacts into my um, pelvis and into my hip so my psoas muscle in my hip is very tight, so I always feel very tight on this lower right side. It all comes from the issues with my knee. Okay, and then bring it back to centre. Bring the feet a bit close together and just bring the right knee in and gently hold either behind the thigh or across the shin. Let the upper body relax. And as you breathe out, draw the knee in towards you. If you don't like it pressing directly onto the belly, take it slightly off to the side, more towards the underarm. And then as you breathe in, slightly release. So as you breathe out, you just bring it in a little tighter. As you breathe out in, you just release. So breathing out to compress and breathing in to release. And then replace and change. So again, if you don't like it compressing onto the left side of the abdomen, just move it slightly outwards. But you're just breathing out to draw it in and breathing in to release. So when we do these compressions, we always start with the right side first, right and then left. It's not one of those things where you want to even up and start with the left occasionally. And then bring it back to centre. And now extend that left leg and just let it reach through. So just a passive release into the hips. Because the, the pelvis is slightly elevated, it's just going to open up into that hip a little bit. Notice as you do this, but you don't allow the body to overarch, you're not dropping the pubic bone down. So there's just a sense of dropping the weight of the low back behind the ball as you reach that right leg forward. You can hold that for a few breaths, whatever works for you, and then slide it back in and change sides. So you might feel it more heavily on one side compared to the other. And we're still just relaxed around the upper body, just breathing smoothly. There's no hard and fast breathing really with any of this. And then release. Okay, lift the pelvis, take the ball, the cushion away and just pop it to one side. You're gonna take your feet further apart and then drop your knees in. And like a little set of windscreen wipers, perhaps with the arms out wide, just allow your knees to roll from side to side. You can turn your head in opposition if that works for you. Notice that you keep your chest square to the ceiling. And you're going to get this little bit of movement coming out of the base of the ribs, moving across the back of the pelvis. Maybe you're going to feel a little stretch coming down this upper side in towards the front of the thigh. You might even feel a little bit of stretch across the chest and then back to centre. Toe heel, the feet back to centre. You're going to bring your knees in again, one and then the other. The back will flatten. And then you have a couple of options here. I like to do a deep cross. So I cross my right thigh over my left. And then I can just hold along my shins. You could hold behind the thighs. You don't want to hold onto your feet. Just hold onto the shins. If that doesn't work for you, 
just bring the ankle above the knee and there you can either hold behind the thighs or you can feed through to take hold of the back of the left thigh. So there's loads and loads of options there, but I like a nice tight pull, like I'm really trying to pull myself into a knot. Let the weight of the arms drop down and let the weight of the arms drop naturally back, which will naturally pull the legs in towards you. You're probably going to feel a little bit of pull around here. What you shouldn't feel, of course, is anything in the knees. So just watch that knee. You don't want to rotate into that knee. And again, just a few breaths. Just wait until it just gently begins to naturally soften off. And then you would change the legs over. So again, I go into a deep cross. You might prefer just to take the um, ankle above the knee. If you don't like having the leg unsupported, you could put a couple of cushions or some books here and put the foot on a book on the, a stack of books or a bolster or yoga blocks, or whatever it is you've got. And then again, watching those knees, I'm going to pull my legs nice and close together. Then I'm just going to let the weight of the arms drop back and down, naturally dropping the knees in towards the chest. And again, we've got that compression. So we compressed into the right side of the abdomen first. Now we're compressing the left side. So always right and then left when we come to compressing the abdomen. There's reasons for that, I won't bore you, but if you want to know, just let give me a little uh, nod and I'll explain it more deeply. And then bring it back to centre, uncrossing, placing the feet back down, and then just letting the arms rest and just see how you feel for a moment. And then from here, keeping the feet down on the floor, just shake the flesh on your legs. It is unbelievably pleasant. Once upon a time, it, looked, it took less time for the shaking to stop, but it's still just, it just relaxes that tension. And then roll over onto your side and come up to seated. Okay. So you could do this seated on a, um, on a chair. You don't have to be on the floor, but I'm on the floor. I'm just sitting on my bench. So a comfortable leg position, sitting up nice and tall. Again, you could be on the chair. You could even perhaps do it from standing if you wanted to. And all we're going to do is sweep the arms forward and just pull away through the low back. Like somebody's got to hold the back of your pants, the back of your t-shirt, and is pulling back, but you're just sweeping those arms forward. And then as you breathe in, take the arms wide, drop the arms down, send the front of the body forward, dropping the arms away to open across the chest. Lift the chin, but don't dump the head. And then pull away, breathing out, and then lift, breathing in. So you get this lovely flexion extension. If you're on the hands and knees, it'd be a cat stretch. So we round, and then we lift, breathing out, and then in. A couple more. Nice and fluid, nothing harsh and then bring it back to center this time, good. So again, seated comfortably, just allow yourself to rotate to one side. So if you were on a chair, you might put one hand onto your thigh and maybe the other hand onto the back of the chair. You wanna keep your pelvis fairly still. If you're sitting on the floor, just let the hands rest. It's not about yanking yourself through with, um, with force. You just want to allow the spine to gently rotate Keep the shoulders down, open the chest, slightly draw back the chin. If you want to turn your head a little further, you can do, but under your own steam, not too heavily with those hands. Couple of breaths here and get that feeling of that, that winding spiral in the spine. And then very gently bring it back to center and allow yourself to move around to the other side. So again, pelvis stays nice and still. You might notice it doesn't feel the same on both sides, it might feel a little stickier on one side than the other. Hands just rest, not too much effort or force through those. Really open between the collarbones across the chest. Let the shoulders naturally drop down. We're not trying to force them down. So the, the natural body heaviness helps. So the, the weight of the shoulder blades just take themselves into place. If you want to turn your head more just to get that little bit of spiral through the neck as well, than you could do. And then bring it back to centre. Okay, shrug those shoulders. 
So to release the tension around the shoulders, because if you've been rounding or digging or lifting and shifting, you get a bit shoulderish. So take the arms out, you're going to take the back of your right hand to your low back, you're going to bring your left hand to the back of your head, okay, and then out, and then change. So you're just going out, touch low, touch high, out, touch low, touch high. So if I turn my back, taking it out, hand to the back of the head, hand to the lower back. Now you could, if you wanted to, start to think about moving that closer. So hands come closer and closer together. So can you create the range of movement around the shoulder that allows this bottom hand to come up, so if you're trying to scratch between your shoulder blades, and the top hand to come down until maybe they even touch. Now it's not for everybody, it's big range of movement in the shoulders. So it's not for everybody. And as you do that, do try and keep your head from pressing forward. So we don't want to push our head forward to do that. We stay lifted, chin stays drawn in. And that just helps to mobilize those shoulders, open around the chest, and then bring it back to center. Let the hands just rest. Or if you're sit sitting on the floor, let the hands just rest on the floor to the side of you. And then just move into an easy, fluid, side bend. Pelvis nice and still. Breathe in as you lift up and over and breathe out back to centre. Breathe in as you lift up and over and feel that length coming out of the waist, through the ribs, into the underarm, maybe down to the fingers. Expand into the side of that rib cage. One more time and then bring it back to centre, shrug the shoulders, release the neck. There you go, so that's just a little bit of some of the stuff that I do when my back feels a little bit hard done to, particularly when I've been spending a lot of time in the garden. Hope it's helpful, let me know what you think, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.